understand is that the core of what it means to be American is this notion of basic fairness. That everybody's in the deal. Americans don't mind making sacrifices when we're in trouble, whether it's a war or economic difficulty. But the one thing Americans dislike more than anything else is being played for a sucker. Being played for a sucker. Finding out you're giving it the office, and the other guy, he ain't in on the deal. But he's getting the same benefit. This isn't about soaking the rich. This isn't about, uh, you know, success in here, all this stuff you're about. It's just about making sure, man, you guys are giving it the office, not to attack in every way, but everybody should be in the deal. And part of that relates to our policies that how to treat companies that go abroad and companies that go home. It's not just about tax policy. Every CEO that I ask in the group, and I come from the state of incorporation, the state of Delaware, I represented a major corporate a state that has more incorporations than incorporated in any other state in the world, in the nation, I should say. And every one of the CEOs in the past and now that I ask, I said, what can we do to help? What's the most important thing that we can do? And they say, education, 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 <coughs> education. I 
am optimistic. I'm more optimistic today than when I got elected as a 28-year-old, 29-year-old kid to the United States Senate. Truly more optimistic. Because America, if you look at the facts, is better positioned than any other nation in the world to lead, be the leading economy in the world in the 21st century as we were in the 20th. But one of the things we need to do is separate myth from fact. The myth, if you look at all the polling that is, and I've been among some of you, is that China's going to dominate the 21st century. 50% already think they do dominate economically and will dominate in the dominant position. The myth is that these days, America's uh, leading edge in manufacturing is gone, gone for how many times you can turn on the television here? Very smart people say that we have to switch from manufacturing to service jobs. We have to be only in the high end. High tech and this high. Hey folks, well, we have to adjust to new reality. They're telling us we have to adjust to new reality. I would argue they have to adjust to new reality. I'm here to tell you that these assertions are nothing but myths. This very day, our economy is stronger, larger, and more vibrant than any economy in the world. Let me just give you some facts. Our economy is two and a half times as large as China's. Two and a half times as large. Our per capita GDP is 10 times as large as China's. We're $48,000, they're $4,500. They've got to create 20 million new jobs per year just to stand pat. Ladies and gentlemen, our economy is larger than the next three economies combined. And the competition that we've, reached, that we've recently faced has done two important things. And I said this when I'm doing a lot of China posts. I spent four days in China in August with the new, the soon to be new president of China. And I said, you know, you've done us a favor. The miraculous change you've made getting 20% of your population out of abject poverty over the last 30 years is remarkable. It's good. It's good. It's good for stability in Asia. It's good for your economy to grow because ultimately it provides a market for us. And I pointed out to him that the fact that this has occurred has finally awakened the American giant. Has finally made us sit back and say, whoa, wait a minute, man. We don't have to roll over and conclude that the American century is gone. We can stand up and America's starting to stand up and say, not Joe Biden and Barack Obama, but Americans are saying, again, where is it written that we can't lead the world? Where is it written? Look, we have a problem, and we have problems, but they are soluble with shared responsibility and commitment. And they pale in comparison to the problems of some of our largest competitors which they face over the next single decades. So folks, the point I want to make to you is, we're not starting this re-engaging in competition in a way that we're behind the curve. We're starting where we're still, as much as we have to reclaim, we're still better positioned in the world than anyone. Let me put this in perspective, just give you one statistic. What you hear about, and most Americans think, including businessmen think, America, China is the dominant manufacturing power in the world. That they've already won the race. Well, let me give you a statistic. In 2010, China accounted for 19.6% of global manufacturing. In 2010, the United States just eking out of a recession that was the worst recession since the Great Depression. We we account for 19.4% of the manufacturing globally in the world. So let's shed this notion that somehow we're starting from a 10-foot hole. We're the most productive workers in the world. We're the best financial system in the world. We're the best innovators in the world. We have the best research universities in the entire world. And ladies and gentlemen, I am absolutely convinced because of you workers on the floor, America is coming back and will lead the world.